State nine and four last year, um, six and three in the conference. Returning starters, they got five on offense, six on defense. Experience wise, number one twenty three in the country. That's number thirteen in the conference. Their over under is eight and a half. The over is plus one twenty. The under minus one forty. Uh, things. I'm not going to say they're not looking good because this is completely different than than what they were going through just a few short years ago. Um, Sean Clifford is the redshirt sophomore quarterback that appears to have run off Tommy Stevens. Uh, he competed pretty well in spring practice, and I think Tommy Stevens saw the writing on the wall. But look, it, the difference is Trace McSorley was a flat-out winner. That's right. And he was maybe the most respected quarterback in the conference. And like he was a coach's player. Can Sean Clifford bring any of that leadership and that uh, just togetherness that McSorley did? Because this was McSorley's team for three years. That's right. Like, and and I don't know what this team will look like without him. Um, you know, they've got Ricky Slade, uh, wide receiver coming back, uh, or sorry, uh, running back coming back. Uh, Forty-five rushing attempts last year. He is the team's most experienced runner. They don't have a lot of experience as far as quarterback and running back go. Wide receivers, they're going to be starting a freshman wide receiver, Justin Shorter. They've got a ton of sophomores and freshmen, not a lot of experience at all, but they got talent. Sure. Defense, they were eighth in the country in pass efficiency defense last year. They got two starters back in the secondary. I don't know they're going to be as good. Uh, They do have... Like they're going to be able to get pressure on the quarterback, and I think that will help them out a ton on this. Well, they're going to have going to, to have it. They're going to have to lean on the defense this year while waiting for the playmakers, like the young guys on the other side, to get up to speed. Um, you know they they've had three straight recruiting classes that have been in the top twelve. I think this year you really start to see that, but. Early on, it could be a little bit difficult, and I, I think just for the whole season, it's going to be trying to get caught up, right? So I've got Penn State at 8-4 and four this year. I've got them 5-4 and four in the conference. I've got losses at Iowa against Michigan, uh, at Michigan State, and then at Ohio State. I've got them 8-4 and four as well. I, I think you're, you're dead on. Their offense is going to take a major hit. Defensively, they should be okay. The, the problem is, I I think this conference is getting better across the board. Yeah. I, they play Purdue. I don't think you can just be a pushover against Purdue. Are they going to have more talent than Purdue? Yeah. Purdue's coming to Penn State? Sure. I don't know that that matters. I don't know that you can just chalk up a W there and say, this is what we always do. They could easily lose that game. There's a couple of games that I've got them winning that I think they can lose. And it won't surprise me at all. Yeah. And, yeah you're right. and and if they ended up seven and five, my question is is what does Penn State look like next year? I think Nick I think Penn State will actually be better next year than they are this year. So you don't think a bad season this year they'll make any changes? No. I think they'll be fine. Because I, there were there were people that were talking about, you know. Well, no. if if Urban Meyer doesn't take the USC job, like, it, would it surprise you if James Franklin takes it? No, that's that's the guy that I thought was gonna take it. I think it's Urban Meyer. I think Meyer takes USC, but we'll see. We that's the fun part about college football. Sure. That's you know the players and whatnot. That that's become a, a fun thing. But either way, uh, let's.